Okay, folks, it's South Florida Poetry Journal back uh, again, uh, this time with Denise Duhamel, who's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, Blowout. So, Denise, if you would, if you could tell us a little bit how it was born, how it came about, uh, came about uh, in writing uh, Blowout. Well, um, it came out from a lot of sadness, actually, and the end of a marriage. And I was writing and writing and writing and writing, and not ch I thought I could just take that whole year and just sort of push it away and start a new book, and I really couldn't. Um, and then I had a friend, Stephanie Strickland, who helps me put all my books together, and I said, you know, these are the poems I've been working on, but I have this new stuff, which I think is so much better, which wasn't better. And she's like, you know, this is a book. I mean, it wasn't in the right order. We had to, like, play around and take out a lot of poems, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, yeah, I, I'm really glad that I did it. It's, uh, it was born out of sadness and, you know, really sort of tragic situations, but um, it helped me make sense of it. And I think also it worked as a poetry book. In ter you know, everyone falls in love and, sure. and probably 99.999% of us have been disappointed or right. betrayed. And Sort of so. was it cathartic, so you kind of like got that flushed out now? Is that sort of how it ended up? or? Yeah, and it's so interesting because when I meet um, I just met a young woman and she's like, oh, the same thing happened to me. And I thought, how could it happen to you? You look like 25. And she goes, oh, well, I, I didn't get married. But that same, you know, the way we build people up and then, you know, how we don't see the red flags and how disappointed we can be and how sad and how tragic. So, sure. Would you read a poem from Blowout? Sure. Um, this one is called Old, Old Love Poems. I can burn the pictures but not the poems, since I publish them in books, which are on shelves, in libraries, and in people's homes. When my cousin told me not to write anything down, because the words would be there forever to remind me of the fool I once was. My cousin was the little dog on the tarot card, barking at the fool's heels as I headed right towards the cliff. When James Taylor and Carly Simon broke up, I was shocked. Taylor's drug use or not, couldn't they work it out? I was in college, and though I didn't really believe in marriage, I believed in them. How could they part having written those love songs? And how could they go on singing those love songs after the divorce? But now I know. After time, when they reached for those notes, there wasn't really a beloved there anymore, just some raw material each left behind on the other's scarf or pillow raw material that transcended into something more real than they were, the lovers themselves, ephemeral muses. It's still hard for me to accept the notion of love outliving the lovers, a notion so romantic it's unromantic. Hard to accept that those big lumps of affection would find alternate places to stick, that Simon and Taylor would be swept away and marry others. That need is not so much a deficit as an asset, like a wallet that keeps manufacturing its own dollar bills, even after it's been robbed of everything. Or to say it another way, the plant that will bloom despite being uprooted, the new seedling that will pop up. It's hard to believe when you are down to your last penny, when the soil is dry and rocky and full of weeds, when your love is freeze-dried into a metallic pouch and you are full of snarky rage. You look back at a love poem you wrote and ask, did I really feel this way? Even if you no longer remember tenderness, even if the verse was simply artifice, your idea of love, a subspecies you made up to tag and define that one poor sap, you read the poem again, grateful, holding the words in your hands like a bunch of flowers. Wow, fantastic. Thank you. I love snarky rage. Where snarky the hell, rage. Where the hell did that? That must have just jumped out, I bet. I think so, yeah. It's one of those phrases that, um, you know, <laughs> I love it. Thanks. Um, do you, you know, this might follow, go back on something I've asked before in a different way, but do you write books or poems? Poems, you do definitely. Write poems. I mean, I have maybe two books three books mm -hmm. that I wrote as books, and that would be kinky, because all the poems are about Barbie dolls right. and the feminist you know, mm -hmm. interpretation. Um, the Woman with Two Vaginas, mm -hmm. which is all Inuit myth, right. 
and a little tiny chapbook called How the Sky Fell, which is all revisionist fairy tales. But even those, they weren't written like page one, page two. I mean, I just wrote a lot and then saved what I could and, and sort of shaped them. But no, I, I don't really, I have this great quote by um, Robert Frost who said, if there are 25 poems in a book, there are really 26, and the 26 is the book itself. Okay. So the idea of how to shape the book is really interesting to me and in how, you know, uh, the way you order the poems like really tells a story. Sure. And the same poems could be ordered a different way, and it would be a different book. Yeah, but have a whole different uh, yeah. feel to it and, mm -hmm. and tone, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not a matter of sitting down and saying, okay, today I'm going to write these Inuit poems, and I'm going to write all these poems. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not, it wasn't like that. It's just like you just found yourself writing that mm -hmm. had this same sort of theme running through it and said, hey, this looks like it's starting to be a collection. Right. Right, and then you push it. I mean, I remember with the Barbie poems I wrote, like one, I thought that was kind of fun, and I had another idea. And then suddenly, everywhere I looked, it was like, oh, that could be a Barbie doll doing that. Or, you know, and I, I was able to use her as a vehicle, right? Sure. Or a, a metaphor or whatever right, for right. feminism, so. That's great. Yeah. Um, here's a little fun question. If you were a 19th century poet, whom would you be? Oh my goodness. I guess I'd be Walt Whitman. I mean, I would want to be Walt Whitman. <laughs> well, he's my guy. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, when we were here earlier with Kim. She said, "Well, it's got to be either Walt Whitman or um, um, uh, Emily Dickinson." Emily Dickinson. Thank you so much. Yeah. The older I get, the more I forget. No, I got right? you. Right, the two pillars of really modern poetry. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's interesting. Um, I think I'm more. Well, I think she's. I think Kim Adnizio and I are more Walt Whitman, maybe, because yeah. the. I mean, I love Emily Dickinson, sure. but I don't think I will ever write a teeny tiny yeah. compact thing. I mean, I'm much more right. open. Um, now you've been in Florida for a while. Do you feel like you're? This is home now. This is, you're a South Florida poet, or yeah. I do, okay. and I owe it all to you, Lenny. Wow, well, <laughs> no, I. It, no. It's very true. Lenny got me down here for my first reading uh, in 1999, and I know that was had it a big in part. Ninety. Oh, sorry, 98. Was it? I don't even remember. 98. That's 60, 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. Is that 18 years. Oh, 18. Nice. Yeah. It's a long time. But did you feel like you were a Rhode Island poet before? Did you feel like? Did you ever feel like you're no, attached to the? Geography I felt of? I was a New York poet for yeah. many, many years because when I grew up in Rhode Island, I was just I loved Rhode I love Rhode Island now, but I was trying to escape it in yeah. a way. Yeah. So I w went to college in Boston and then New York and stayed there for like 18 years. Okay. So I think when I was in New York, I wrote. It's so exciting to be in New York, and I wrote a lot about New York and. Right. And Florida is harder, if you ask me, because it's so beautiful. Um, so, like, I, for me, I'm not a nature poet, so it's like, I don't, anything I try to write about the natural beauty is like, wah, 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 not good. So, but I can write about traffic. You know, I can, I kind of can go in that direction right. or de overdevelopment or whatever. So more of an urban kind of a landscape. I think landscape. so, yeah. yeah. I wish I had a more Mary Oliver in me, but I tend yeah. to be... Speaking of Mary Oliver, I remember reading her many, many years ago and, um, you know, loved her stuff. And then I think I bought another book or read some more stuff and it was fantastic. But it got to the point where I almost had to, I like had to quit reading her because it seemed to me the same sort of, uh, the same sort of five, eight, ten poems over and over and over again because they were all so much about nature. You know, but I, I, and in all honestly, I don't find that. So you can't say that you're urban in the sense that it's always an urban landscape because mm -hmm. you have this ability, it seems to me, where you're, you start off in one place with, with the poem and the journey takes you all into another place, even though it's yeah. grounded in one situation, but you explore all these other sorts of areas. So you can't yeah. really say you're an urban poet, but no, you yeah. know, uh, you don't get sick of it. You don't yeah. get tired. You don't get worn out by the, by the, uh, the imagery and all the, the, the phrasing because you have such a fresh 
uh, fresh way of presenting ideas more so Thank than you. I think images, I think. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Because I think, oh, I'm so concrete detail. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Like I'm always trying to tell a story or tell a... Yeah. Because yeah. you, you're Able. often, you know, I think the reader's often surprised with a lot of your poems because you think it's going to be, you think you're going over here, but you, you wind yeah. up <laughs> going off and it's not. And, you're, and you're, you go off somewhere else with it sometimes. Not all the time, but it, it's just yeah. you have a wonderful way of opening that kind of thing up like that. Um, Thanks. Yeah, you got to trust your leaps, I think, for me anyway. Yeah, and I think sure. like that whole, um, David Kirby called it ultra talk poetry. Yeah. And I think there are quite a few poets that do that yeah. and when you trust your leaps and you you yeah. bring the reader along it's okay and right. I think I spent a lot of time as a young poet like oh these leaps don't make any sense or right. taking them out and trying to just be linear and it right. it, it didn't wasn't really my voice and right. some poets are great at that you know Mary Oliver one of them sure. right she right. doesn't try to bring you to China and yeah, hell exactly. and the mall, you know, she just right. tries to do it's, something. It, it begins and ends in the same yeah. place, where, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what was that phrase that David Kirby that you just said that was interesting? Ultra talk. Ultra talk. Mm -hmm. what and is he, well, he describes it as very conversational poems, yes. but of course much better than conversation right. because you're not stammering or looking yeah. for the right word or you can edit things out, but they have the illusion of being spoken Sort of like and ordinary language. Yeah. Right. 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 That's interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. I'm gonna have to yeah, U L T R A talk. Yeah. He has an essay about it. It's really interesting. Right? Yeah. Do you read many essays? I do. Yeah. I do. I do. I mean on poetic craft Whatever. and so I mean, forth. Just essays in general, your poetic craft essays? Yeah. yeah. Well I really liked um, Tony Hoagland has a book, Twenty Poems That Could Save America. Yeah. And it's uh, essays, okay. and it's really, it's fabulous. Does that inspire you to write something in that vein? Have you written essays? I don't even know. Yeah, I well, they're not exactly essays, but um, Julie Wade, who yes. also yes. appeared in your fine magazine, <laughs> she and I um, do collaborations uh, in prose. So okay. they are, I guess, what would be called creative nonfiction, but they have a very, you know, so we'll research stuff right. and... Yeah, I really like essays. Um, I never, um, I never even heard of this sort of poetic essay kind of thing, you know, prose poems. Yeah. But I, I and well, not until I heard uh, uh, Julie Marie read, did, and I didn't know that's what it was when I heard right. her reading it right. until she started talking about it, and I was like, but I did have this in my head though. I was kind of like wondering what it looked like on the page when she was reading. I mm -hmm. kind of wanted to get up and see it because I kind of mm -hmm. thought maybe it was written in prose poem form, perhaps. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, it is yeah. a lot of it. I mean, like chunks, you know, like with right. asterisks right. and yeah. Right. So, and, and earlier today, just to wrap up a little bit here, earlier today at your reading, you talked a little about, I think, I don't know if somebody asked you a question, but uh, doing research for mm -hmm. a poem. There was, uh, I forget what poem, what was it, the, um, the poem you did like three it, years? How Deep It Goes, which yeah. is a poem about, you know, the history of feminism yes. as I see it, or, you know. And it took I, you three years to, to get to that, to, mm -hmm. to do that poem. Well, yeah, I mean, I was just reading a lot and taking a lot of notes and, yeah getting discouraged and coming back and finding other writers and yeah. So I mean, you kind of keep them in a folder somewhere, the mm -hmm. unfinished kind of stuff and go back to it every once in a while and then yeah. sort of tackle it again? Because mm -hmm. that's, that's uh, you know, uh, it's a lot of work to do to research something for that long of a time to, to back well, something out. it's interesting because I wasn't even really researching it to write the poem. Uh -huh. I was just researching it because I was okay. very interested in, but yeah, my idea was, and there is none, I was looking for a place in time where women and men had equal footing. Uh -huh. There isn't one, okay. if you, unless I couldn't find it. Yeah. But so, but it led me on all these crazy journeys right. and it was really fun. Yeah. So what are you doing for the rest of the Miami Book Fair? I want to get that in there. We're at the Miami yeah. Book Fair. Yeah, I'm going to go see my um, idol. Uh, oh God, I'm blanking on her name. I was just talking about Ellie Miles. Is ah, reading at three thirty yes. right after this, uh -huh. um, and I'm going to try to see Bernie Sanders, but I have a feeling I won't get in. I think the burn. I'm that's, feeling the burn. I love Bernie. I I'm, I'm just so no. I there's so many of us that we're just yeah. going to go deep. <laughs> And we're going to come back strong. Yes, we're going to come back absolutely. strong. We are not going to let this happen. Absolutely. Well, no listen, way. Denise, I thank you so much. You've been really gracious about this. We appreciate thank that. You. Thank you. Thanks, Lenny.